Profiles in Holography is brought to you through the generous support of the International Holography Fund. For more information, visit their website at holographyfund.org. Hello everyone, this is Frank DeFreitas, and I would like to welcome you to the 2008-2009 season opener for the Holotalk Show, the internet radio broadcast for lasers and holography here at holoworld.com. Now in its 12th year, I believe, or 13, I do not remember any longer how long it's been. My guest this week for this opening show is Anna Maria Nicholson, who is the founding director of the Center for Holographic Arts in Long Island City, New York. And Anna is going to tell us amazing stories about her beginnings in holography back when they were next door neighbors to Lloyd Cross and the early days and moving on up to the founding of the center. Before we get started with Anna Maria, I would like to also welcome you to stop by a new section of my own website, which is called Antiquarian Holographica. Now, let me tell you briefly what that means. About 20 years ago, 20 years ago exactly, I wrote an article entitled Antiquarian Holographica, and it was an article about collecting holographic memorabilia, or what they term printed ephemera. And ephemera is materials that have a very short lifetime. For instance, if you get a postcard in the mail that says that so-and-so is having an exhibit that's running from August such to November such, that is considered ephemera because you look at that and you don't save it, you throw it away. Well, I saved everything. And because this is the 20th anniversary of that article, I thought, well, you know what, it's time to crack open the archives. And that's exactly what I did this past summer. And I found thousands, thousands of pieces of holographic history in my filing cabinets that is currently being archived and entered into a searchable database. So that's a new section of the website. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I put up a new piece of holographic ephemera for you to take a look at and to even hear a little bit of a story behind each one of the pieces because I didn't buy them on eBay. I actually got them in real time and they go back over 32 years. So I've been collecting these pieces for 32 years. So hopefully one day when I pass on, I I'm going to have it designated that this collection be turned over to an appropriate institution or organization that will take care of it for people in the future to be able to see this work. Now, some of the pieces have holograms, but the majority of the pieces do not. And that's what's important because a lot of times people saved the pieces that had holograms on them, but they threw away the pieces that did not have holograms. And my collection was heavily focused on printed ephemera, whether it had a hologram or not. So I'm imagining that some of the pieces, some of them, may be the only existing pieces left in the world of these particular pieces of paper, and thousands of them. So Antiquarian Holographica, uh, if you go to holoworld.com, you'll see a link that will take you over, and every Monday and Wednesday, Friday, you'll see a uh, a new piece put up and a little bit of a story behind the piece, and uh, you'll be able to take a look at the collection. So without further ado, let's move on to my interview with Anna Maria Nicholson, and I'd also like to point out there's a little bit of a hum that's uh, that got picked up by the recording. I'm trying to find out what that hum is. I cannot find it. It's not here now, but it was there doing the recording. It just goes to show. But anyway, I don't think it's uh, that obtrusive that it's going to take away your pleasure of listening to the fascinating stories that she's going to tell you tonight on Holo Talk. So this is Frank DeFreitas. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to having you come back for further Holo Talk shows over the winter months if you happen to be in the northern hemisphere, and the lucky ones, the summer months if you're in the southern hemisphere. All right, take care. Hello, Martina speaking. Hello, Martina. How are you? It's Frank DeFreitas. Hey, Frank. How are you? Doing good. Excellent. Now, you're calling to speak to Anna Maria? Yes, I am. She's just here. I'll pass you over. Thank you so much. 
Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Finally. Good. Are you uh, ready to do our little interview? I'm ready to do a little interview. Well, I'm sure that the world's ready to hear from you, too. Wow. Oof. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure. The people are going to love to hear everything about what you've done in holography. Okay. What an impressive life and career you've had. Well, thank you. And it's still such, in such the early days, too. Well, <laughs> uh, oh, either that or... Well, yes, let's, let's be positive. Okay. Well, let's let's start off the interview by having you tell a little bit about your early history in holography and the work that you and your husband were working on. Uh-huh. And then we'll just take it step by step, finally leading up to the Center for Holographic Arts in Long Island City, New York. Okay. So, first off, what brought you to holography in the first place? Okay, what happened was that uh, by chance, Peter and I had were became quite interested in holography, uh, just the idea of it. You know, it was everywhere. Remember the Life magazine article and all mm-hmm. of that? Yes, yes. And by chance, uh, Lloyd Cross rented for the, uh, for the summer the loft behind us on Prince Street. Oh, no kidding. Yes. And we met, you know, on the street. He helped us unload the car one day. And he had all of these holograms that he had done uh, at the university of where he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he now was presenting them to the world. Okay. And he that's where he started doing the laser. You remember the laser... Um, laser light shows? Yes, yeah. the laser light shows. Yeah, the very early laser light shows. Very early. Yeah. And the, one of the first ones was done at, in our building on Prince Street. Oh, no kidding. Yes. And what were you doing at the time? I was a mom. And okay. I was doing photography, and All right. I, you know, and I was I mean, always dabbled. But uh, when then I saw a hologram uh, or several of the holograms that Lloyd had, and it was just absolute love at first sight. Well, what type of holograms did he have? Were they had, uh, were they the multiplex holograms yet, no, or no, just no, 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 just no, very no. simple uh, reflection or laser transmission? Not even reflection. There was no reflection then. It was laser illuminated. Okay. Uh, transmission. Okay. But, they, you know, you remember when you see the, your first hologram. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I thought, this is, this is what I need to do with my life. Hmm. And so... Isn't that something? Yes, I There's know. so many people tell the same thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder what happened. You know, the, uh, esoterically, they say that we all come from, uh, we all came from Atlantis, where we were all involved in holography. Oh, okay. You know, I mean... I can go for that. Uh, Better than coming from Philadelphia, where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, we, uh, Lloyd Cross and, and, and Peter and I uh, and our families, we went to Arizona to uh, a school called Verde Valley School, okay. uh, where a friend of mine was teaching, and they started a holography program. For, for It was a high school. Oh. And um, so that's where uh, Lloyd Cross inv- uh, invented uh, the multiplex. No kidding. Yes. What a wonderful, fascinating story this is. Ah, uh, and uh, so after after that, um, we all went to San Francisco where uh, he started the school, mm-hmm. and uh, we kind of split from there. Peter and and Lloyd had a big disagreement on on what the future of holography was going to be. Oh. And Peter thought that we should concentrate on pulse holography. Okay. And, uh, and Lloyd was saying continuous wave, I would imagine. Well, multiplex. R- multiplex holograms. Yeah. yeah. And so, which, uh, and I agreed, and we all both felt that it wasn't the real holography, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, after that, um, we came back to New York, and uh, we, uh, Peter got a grant from the, the Kaplan Fund to... Uh, to organize an exhibition of holography for the um, biennial, bicentennial, or one of those uh, uh, celebrations. Okay. And he went around the country, and he realized by that time that a lot of the, um, the, the facilities were closing. Mm, already, and huh? You remember that, that that period? What you're talking about around '76, I would imagine, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. When, when uh, you know, all that easy money that people dreamed of didn't materialize. So he convinced uh, McDonnell Douglas to donate uh, some of his equipment. Oh, he, we, 
we, he went to the Smithsonian and, and convinced them to start a holography uh, program. Wow. And um, and the Kaplan's funded it, and the, there was equipment from uh, McDonnell Douglas. Was that at the Cooper Hewitt Museum? That yes, program. It, it was. It was the Cooper Hewitt was part of the Smithsonian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we found space at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Those were the days mm. <laughs> when an artist could just walk in, uh, and uh, so we had the program there for three years. Okay. And it was the cent uh, Center for Experimental Holography. And at, at the end of that, that period, we, the University of Hawaii was very interested in, in starting new non-polluting uh, 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 technologies. So um, we went to the University of Hawaii with the Center for uh, Experimental Holography. And that's where we did the portrait of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I have, which we just transferred to them, uh, and it looks great. So, and then after that, um, the, f the funding stopped, so we, ha we formed a commercial company called Holographics. Okay, where was that located? Uh, it, was, it started in Hawaii, but we came then back to New York. Okay. And it was in, and then the... Basically, the, the most of, of the energy of the company was for non-destructive testing. I see. And that's when uh, Peter designed a small laser, uh, a portable pulse laser. Uh, and I then uh, took over the whole portraiture and, and my own art holograms. And uh, eventually we had, I had this, the portrait studio at the Museum of Holography. Yeah, you also had a show at the Museum of Holography, yes. right? Yes, I had yeah. a show at the Museum of Holography. And then uh, when the museum closed, um, there was, you know, nothing, nothing in New York, as you know. And yeah. um, in 19, uh, I started working with Dan Schweitzer. He came uh, to help me. I had a show then at the Fishback Gallery on 57th Street. Not familiar and, with that, but uh, yeah, it, yeah. it was a, it's a good, it was a good gallery. It, now it's in, in Chelsea, but then it was in, on 57th Street and. Um, I needed help, and Dan came to help me uh, to put together the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And um, we met uh, Posey Jackson, and uh, the uh, um, she thought that they had to have a a new center for holography was a very good idea, and that oh. uh, Dan and I were we got along so well. If, and you know how wonderful Dan was. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, so uh, we got funding from the, at that time, was the Shearwater Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they very, very uh, generously funded us uh, the first uh, three years. And you're celebrating your 10th anniversary. We are celebrating our 10th anniversary. As of August. Um, is that correct? Uh, no, the, August is going to be the 11th. August, well, this past August. This past August, yes. Yes, was the 10th. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and um, the equipment, um, I, the holographics, the, the company I was working for, mm -hmm. um, I was bought by uh, some German company, and they weren't interested in, in the whole portraiture or, or holography, as, and so I, they owed me quite a bit of back pay, so instead uh, they gave me all the, the, the pulse laser and all the oh. equipment. Yes. That's a nice deal. It's a, it was a very nice deal. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, what sometimes happens when these companies uh, change, they just throw things out. Oh, absolutely. I'm it, finding that out with a lot of materials. Did you hear what happened at Polaroid? Yeah. I mean, it was horrible. No, what happened at Polaroid? Well, they, uh, from what I understand, they just, even, even uh, plates, ACFA plates, anything, they just, it was, they were on. Uh, uh, on, the, on the dumpsters. And That's horrible. I know, I know. But so anyway, I was very. We were very lucky, and we started the the center for the holographic arts. Now, I've I've seen your portraiture for years. Mm -hmm. And when I was up at the center visiting last time, I wanted to try and figure out uh, exactly what it was about your work that made it so different to me 
viewing it that, uh, and I think the word that I was looking for, I couldn't find the word at the time, but I think the word is that everyone looks more human mm -hmm. in your work than in other post work that I've seen. Uh -huh. Well, you know, portraiture uh, is an art form, <laughs> and a very ancient art form mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Um, so it's not that just anyone can take a good portrait. I mean, anyone can take a portrait, but to take a really good portrait takes uh, a little bit of finesse, you know, and, and art artistic... Uh, uh, do you have a lighting technique that you would say is distinct well, like really. yours? The lighting no? is, is, um, it's standard for what post work would be, right? Or yes, because it, it, when we were at the museum, we only had one light um, for for the portrait. When we came to the center, we decided to, that we needed to be more flexible. So we now have two lights, uh, for the, the uh, light from both sides of the, uh, of the face. Um, but that's not where it, you know, why they look so different. I think that mm -hmm. it's because you need to establish a relationship with a... A rapport. A rapport with the client yes. and, uh, and see where they are and, and who they are. Also, don't forget that they are, it's a very intimate situation because you're in the dark. You mm -hmm. are there, they don't know. They've never been uh, through this experience. Yes, it's and a laser that's going open. to flash on them. They don't know what's going to happen to exactly. them. Exactly. So I think that they're more vulnerable and more open. Mm -hmm. And they, then is, that, that gives you the opportunity to establish this rapport with, with your client. Mm -hmm. And why don't you tell the listeners some of the people who you have created well, holographic portraits for? Yes. Um, well, Hars, uh, Schwarzenegger, um, let's see if I can remember everyone. Um, Walter Cronkite, uh, David Byrne of the uh, Talking Heads, uh, uh, help me here. <laughs> Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem. Um, uh, Keith Haring. Keith Haring. Yeah. Philip Johnson, uh, and so on and so on. Diane Dixon, the Diane Olympic Dixon, athlete. Yes. Yeah. I did. I, had, I did a series uh, of the Olympians. It was called. Oh. And I did. Um, Diane Dixon and uh, Billy, uh, Willie Banks was uh, another one and uh, several others. Um, now the Center for Holographic Arts is both a holographic portrait studio and also a center of learning yes. and an exhibit gallery all yes. rolled up yes. into one, isn't it? Yes. Well, b um, before we finish with the portraits, I, I should say that I'm having uh, this exhibition of portraiture at the uh, Butler Museum um, in, in Ohio. And what are the November. dates for that? It's November 23rd is the opening. Okay. And so it will be, it will be very, it's, they are a wonderful uh, institution. So That's not Thanksgiving Day, is it? Oh gosh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I have to check. Yes. I doubt it would be. Yeah, me too, but that's, that's the date that we, we put it. Anyway, well, it will be Thanksgiving uh, over the day in Ohio. <laughs> It's something to do after you have dinner. Yes. <laughs> is go over and see the uh, holographic yeah. portrait exhibit. Actually, it's, it's on, a, on a Sunday. I oh, is it on a Sunday? Thursday is the Sunday. Okay. Uh, or Saturday or Sunday, yeah. Okay. So the, the center basically uh, was established for two p purposes. One is to promote the art of holography. And so uh, to have exhibitions of, of uh, art uh, that, has been that have been produced here, art pieces. The second is the artist in residency program, where we offer artists not only not just holographers, but artists uh, of any media uh, to come and work uh, in ho explore mm -hmm. holography as a possible art media. That's wonderful. Yes, and we've had um, um, close to 50 artists now. Okay. Um, and uh, a lot <laughs> producing many, many, many pieces that have been shown all over the world. Are you in running any of these programs in conjunction with any of the colleges in New York at no. all? Art schools or anything? It's all independent. Oh, yes. Uh, SBA, um, uh, Sam Murray, who, who uh, of course, is, is an integral part of, of the center, um, he has a, a, a course, uh, a SBA course on, on holography. Okay. And they come to the center. Wonderful. And, uh, yes. And, and you have a great lab. We have, uh, we have um, other... 
classes who will come and, and visit and so on. And you have a wonderful lab there. We have a wonderful lab. We have a, a very sweet pulse laser, and we have a good transfer uh, table, and we have uh, Martina Grovius, who's uh, helping us here, and um, bringing in the youth and energy that we used to have. <laughs> yes. I still have it. <laughs> well, I want to let the world know I still have years. it. <laughs> Sometimes in the middle of the night you say, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But, but uh, it's a magical, magical, magical medium. Absolutely. Once you're involved with it, that's it. You're yes, stuck. Exactly. I think for most people. Yes. Although the more I go through my historical records and materials here mm -hmm. and archive them, the more names come up that I don't hear anything about holography anymore with. Mm -hmm. So I guess people come and they go. They come and they go, and but, uh, but uh, we we do have enough young people coming in. That's uh, good. Not as not like in the old days when everyone had their own little lab, you remember. But now um, I don't know. I think that there is a it's a there a lot of curiosity and interest. And of course, whenever we have exhibitions, people just love the meeting. Mm -hmm. What are some of the programs that you have coming up there on your calendar? Anything that you can mention? Well, we have um, an exhibition by uh, Yu Yong Ali of uh, Korea. Okay. Then, uh, which is opening uh, next month. Then we have an exhibition. Uh, uh, Sam Murray is having an exhibition uh, at the end of the year. Okay. And Martina Mugovius is also having an exhibition. Uh, Wonderful. At the beginning of the year, uh, we had an exhibition of collaborations that uh, Rudy Burkout and I had done many years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of interesting to see them again. I just found one of the original exhibit catalogs from Sam Moray at the Museum of Holography from 1982. Oh, my goodness. Yep. That was, that's great. I found that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a, he's a very, very, very fine uh, artist. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, and I, you know, it'll be a great show. I'm sure it will be. Wonderful, beautiful work. Yeah. So you know we are um, very de we are completely dependent on on grants. Mm -hmm. So um, we are now waiting to hear what kind of funding we have for next year. And if anyone ever wanted to learn how to do holography, they can just contact you for your workshop programs as well. Absolutely, they should go to our website. Absolutely, um, I'll have a link to your website as well. Oh, great. Yeah, but tell everyone what it is in case they're listening to this ten years later. <laughs> It's holocenter.com, um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, there we have um, all the news uh, uh, that we are doing, what we're doing, and also what other holographers around the world are doing. And we, have, we post dates for the workshop. And it's still very exciting work that you're doing there. Oh, thank you. That never ends, and, and, and I love thank coming you. in. I've, I've been into the center several times now. Uh -huh. I don't get into New York as much as I used to when I was younger. Uh. The trip takes a lot out of me. Really? When I came back from that trip, uh, yes. my wife and I took out there, yes. and we were tired. What a charming wife you have. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, and you're so lucky. I am. Yes. Lucky. For somebody like me, I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so supportive of your endeavors. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Sometimes you need to have that in order to get your work done and do what it is that you need to do. Hopefully I can leave something behind after I move on to greener pastures. And uh, Well, I think that the work that we, have been, that we have done and we're doing still here, the pulse, I think that holography is going to be taking a turn towards much more uh, of the whole digital world. Absolutely. And, but I think that the, this pulse... Uh, uh, and, and CW work that we've been doing, uh, it will be they will be seen as as, as the uh, daguerreotypes uh, are seen now as, as very fine pieces of work. Mm -hmm. and, and yours especially. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I do have a couple portraits mm -hmm. myself here in, in my own. I have a, a small collection huh. of holograms. Nothing like some people yes. do, like. Jonathan Ross has right. an enormous right. collection of right. holography. Right. But uh, right. yours definitely has a more humane 
feel to it than the other portraits. And I don't think that you'd get that many people who would give that common remark that the people look waxy or ghost-like uh-huh. in your holograms because they maintain that, that feeling of being present, of mm. being human, of personality, of, of something internal rather than just surface. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank and you. it's tough to achieve yeah. with anything. And, you, you know, some of my other work, um, I've done a, I'm very, very interested in the human form. Mm-hmm. And I've done a, a great many uh, other pieces. That, uh, you know, I've had that many other exhibitions. In many different styles of work as in well, right? In many different styles yeah. of work. And my, the latest one, um, I really became very interested in exploring the same theme with three different media. And I, and I did a, a video and photography and, and holography. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was called um, uh, Hide and Seek. Oh, and okay. And it was, uh, it was uh, really, it, 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 if you go to my website, com. Oh, uh, I didn't even know you had a personal website. Yes. All these yes. years. How long and have you had that? Many years. I always went to the Holo Center website. No, no, well, there are links to me, but yes. <laughs> and you'll see how, you know, I've, I've, the different exhibitions. Well, I will most definitely make yes. sure that everyone's aware of that as well. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm coming in a little at the end of the line there on uh, uh-huh. on that, a little late. Well. But now it's something for me to do later tonight. <laughs> okay. I'll come down to do editing on the uh, audio, and oh, I can okay. visit your website while I do that. Okay. All right. And is there anything else before we close that you would like the listeners to know about that I didn't ask about? Well, I don't know. We're, we're open to the public uh, on Saturdays for people to come and see the exhibitions. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, we are also, they can call and make uh, appointments uh, if they cannot make it on the Saturday. And um, that's it. That's it. And then for more information, visit the website. Visit the website. Okay. Anna Maria, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. It was an honor to interview, and, and please say hello to everyone for me again. Yes, I will. Thank All you right. so much for, for calling. Okay, take care. Bye.